Welcome to the Ultimate Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Boom shakalaka! Hello and welcome to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast NBA Edition. I'm your host, the Super Coach Matrix, and today I'm doing a mock draft uh, with Mally, uh, Mr. Live My Fantasy on Twitter himself. And we're going to be doing a mock um, from what I consider. We had a little bit of a chat before and we flipped the coin. I thought that seventh would be the hardest spot in an NBA draft, 12 team, nine category comp. And Mally thought that fourth was. So we've challenged ourselves. Mally's going to be drafting from the seventh spot, and I'm going to be drafting from the sport uh, from the fourth spot. Um, as always, we are brought here today by the Standard Squeeze and Ryan from Astute Newstead. Um, we've been using some data in the background from Fantasy Scores as well. So that's fantasyscores.com. Um, with the standard squeeze, um, use our promo code INSIGHT15 to get 15% off. They've got all their great products. I've got the little one here with a little bit of gin, helping you drink responsibly. Uh, Ryan from a new uh, Astute Newstead is there for all of your finance needs in Australia. Um, you know, car loans, uh, refinancing your home loans, uh, getting your dream house, building your dream house, buying your dream house, um, Ryan will be able to help you out. So slide into our DMs. We can get you in touch with Ryan. And Fantasy Scores has been good enough to come on board. We've been using their data uh, for a little while now. Um, so it integrates with Yahoo and allows you to to drag your data from Yahoo and it analyzes it so let you know what categories you should punt. because. Um, you know, we who, I suppose, are involved in the NBA, we know somebody like Giannis isn't the 100th best player that you might read on some draft boards. Um, he's just not very good at field goal percentage, uh, free throw percentage, and he wasn't very good at turnovers and some stats like that. So in a punt free throw, he moves all the way right up and fantasy scores helps you decipher that. All right, we are going to cross live to the start of the draft and um, and have a look how we end up. I'm sort of expecting, you know, again, that Jokic, Embiid, maybe Luca, somebody like that in there in the, um, in the, in that first little bit. I'm going to be muting this. And so, yeah, so Yahoo's boards haven't changed too much. Um, not sure what I'm going to be doing it for. I'm just going to see probably who drops between Tyrese and Shea. I, I haven't drafted Tyrese or, and Shea in a, um, in a um, mock draft yet. So pretty excited to get one of those. Um, interested to see. I don't think – I think you can pair different people with either of them um, with your second pick. I don't think there's any massive deficiencies there. So. I'm back, mate. Oh, you're back. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> what? Who are you hoping slides to you at seven, man? Oh, I'm going to hope the same as I did before with SGA. But, um, yeah, I think I – I think you're right. I think there is a real um, a real gap between that six and seven. Not really an ability, but yeah, I think there's yeah, there's definitely a gap, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get him there. I think he's going to fall before six. He, I mean, I'm I'm seeing him. He's moving um, up the draft board rather than down. So I think seven might leave me in a tricky position. I might be looking at a, a Curry or a Lillard or yep. one of those back end of the first round guys that you're going to have to take a gamble on. I mean, you've got AD there too. You gamble on health um, with him, um, even though he had a better, better season last year. So, yeah, it's um, it's tricky. Last, last time I had number seven, I really struggled because I do believe that there is a clear six. Um, yes. I ended up taking Anthony yeah. Davis, but but I wonder whether, um, whether the Christian would – signing scares me off maybe maybe thinking that he's sort of an ender like back of the first round now um more so than that middle of the first round i think i'd go elsewhere now um yeah. knowing what i know what do you think yeah um i was just going to say before too you know we we were in a position last year in one of our leagues where we were able to trade draft positions and i remember being in a, a similar position to what i am now um, in the in the middle of the rankings, and I found someone who was happy to be there, and I think I moved myself back 
um, from that seven, eight range all the way back to maybe a 10th or 11th spot. And I was much happier there. It's something worth considering to see if your league allows you to do that. Um, yep. yeah, it might be a bit of a game changer for you. All right, mate. We've had the first pick of Nikola Jokic. We've had Joel Embiid and we've had Luka Doncic. I haven't thought too much about the fourth pick, but for all intents and purposes today, I'm going to be taking Shay. He's just, yeah, he's just had a really good sesh there for Canada. Um, yeah, excited to see what he can do. I don't think that he finishes the year as the fourth best player, but I think he's going to be a top 10 guy. So um, lead, lead us into your pick. Um, do you think he'll get to the line plenty like he did last year? I think he will get to the line plenty, and I think he'll knock him at a, um, at a really good rate. He was at 90% last year. Might come back a little bit, but, um, yeah, I'm not too worried there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm having a bit of a think. Um, Halliburton would have been what I went for, but he went at six. I think that's a re- that's a steal for him. I mean, he's been moving up into that two three range in some of the drafts I've been looking at. I guess I'm in the exact position that I thought I would be. I see Steph, I see Lillard, I see um, Anthony Davis. I think I'm going to go Steph in this situation. Yeah, he's coming on my team. Yeah. I like it. You're not scared of um, a, a lesser role, you know, drafting drafting Chris Paul and everything there? Oh, I don't getting think Chris so. Paul. I think it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's still his team, well and truly. I mean, there's no doubt about that, but I don't think he's going to give up much of what he does. Um, I guess it all comes to the point in the season, whether they know if they're, um, if they're playoffs bound as well. That's probably what makes me nervous, I think. Last year we thought we'd see a downturn, and then he and then he kind of rocketed through because they needed him to be that person. They needed him to play hard so they could get a, a finals berth. But um, yeah, I am worried about this year. So we've had um, Lillard come off straight after in ninth, and Durant come off in tenth, and there goes uh, Anthony Davis at eleventh. Yeah, we've still got a few picks until I'm back around. Um, yeah, should do you think- should be noted. Yeah, go yeah, on. Go on. Uh, no, no, it should be noted what? that Tatum went, at, Tatum went at five and Giannis went at eight. I really like Giannis at eight. I think I probably, in your shoes, would have taken Giannis and just started punting straight up. Take us through the next pick after Davis, man. Yeah, so um, Booker went off the board at 12th. I think that's um, a little bit excitable there. I wouldn't pick him that early in the draft. Kyrie at 13th feels not too bad. Uh, Ball at 14th, well, I can't say anything about that. I was willing to take him at 7th spot in the last mock draft that we did together. And Jaron Jackson at 15th, that's too scary for me. Maybe I'm not um, maybe I'm not a big enough risk taker to deal with double with that devil. Mate, I'm wearing this Memphis jersey right here. And, um, yeah, I doubt I would be taking him at 15. Oh, you know what? 15's better than the 11 or 12th that I have seen him taken, so... Um, we have uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Anthony Edwards, and DeMontis Sabonis. Take us through your next one. Yeah, I think um, I've been in this position before. It's just very guard heavy at the end, at the turning point here. I think I'm going to take Donovan Mitchell. Um, he's, his fantasy game really improved last year. I hope that he can um, back it up with the second year. With Cleveland, um, he's positioned himself as the number one guy there. Um, can't see too much changing. Um, yeah, so I've really solidified my points in threes now. So whether I lean into a punt or whether I start moving off in another direction to shore myself up across the board, what are you going to do with this uh, pick at 21, Matty? I'm really struggling. Um, I wonder if I am going a little bit early on um, on Carl Anthony Towns, um, but I just think it gives me some good balance with Shea. Um, I think that he's going to have a better year. I don't think there's going to be too many years where Carl Anthony Towns is the 28th best player uh, for, a, for a long time. I think that he's just going to keep um, trolling where he has. Um, Laurie Markkinen got taken at 19, which I think is absolutely bonkers. James Harden taken at 20th. But I suppose that's sort of the uncertainty of this sort of area. I was really struggling to pick. So, you know what, I'm not going to be too critical of the Laurie Markkinen and James Harden picks because I really struggled with who I was going to take this one. And we know we know what Carl Anthony Towns can do. Um, and with Kat, you can kind of pivot in any, any direction as well. Like he's... He's not bringing you down anywhere. Um, 
he's obviously the the passing of the ships between him being the number one guy and now moving to the number two guy um, in Minnesota um, gives you some reason for concern. I don't think he's getting that spot back now. I think he's way of goodbye to that, but I don't mind the pick. Yeah, potentially a little early, but um, otherwise I'd be happy with that. And then after um, after Towns, we had FEV, Freddie's gone, C. Arkham at 23, Jalen Brown at 24, seems a little early, but not as early as DeMar DeRozan at, at 25, and then DeJounte Murray at 26, which is probably early too, which leaves a lot of um, of good picks for you at 28 still on the board, Matty. You'd be having a field yeah. day. Yeah, I found myself sort of taking Bam at a bio around this area a little bit, um, but I might stay away from the centers a little bit, having just taken Carl. Oh, I've had Mikael Bridges queued up. I think he really slid there at 27. Um, yeah. whew, big decisions here. I think that I'm going to go with a little bit of a homer. Um, I'm going to take Desmond Bain. I found myself taking him a lot of drafts. Doesn't really, it won't win you a comp. Um, but it definitely doesn't ruin anything. And I think that he's, you know what, in and around the 28th best player this year. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, uh, after Desmond. Part of the season when sort of him. What was that? Listen, especially at the start of the season without Jar. Um, I mean, if you yep. start to get cold feet, you can always trade him when his value is super high, as long as everyone else thinks he's going to be able to hold it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Trey Young went at 29th. What do you, what's your outlook on Trey Young this year? Because I really like his fantasy game. Um, if you're just punting efficiency and turnovers and everything like that, do you think he stays in Atlanta? Um, I'd say, I think he sees the season through. Um, again, I, I, I like Trey Young. Um, I've, the other good thing about Trey Young is sometimes you can, um, you can trick someone to um, trade Thaddeus Young for um, with the <laughs> with the T Young initials if they're not paying too much attention. Oh, I would never do that because I'm an USA. But um, yeah, I like him. I've Those tried. assists, great. Um, yeah, he's he's still impressive there. I've, I've gone um, I've gone quiet with my pick um, to see what he started to do when he came back into form last year was very tantalising. Um, obviously, you're going to have concerns with him medically. Um, like that's kind of how his his season fell apart in uh in the finals this year. So I do. Uh, you'd be stupid to say you're not worried about Kawhi, but I'm going to take him there. I think the upside of him is is um, fantastic. So um, yeah, and that and that um, dual el- eligibility being shooting guard small forward is also um it plays in plays in nicely on your um on your lineup. I'll um I'll let you have a bit of a think about your next pick. Um, Darius Garland got taken just before you, which I don't mind in it in and around that thirty. I hate Victor Wembanyama getting taken that early. Um, like taking Victor Wembanyama before LeBron James, regardless of age, in my head is absolutely bonkers. Um, Jimmy Butler, you know what? He's on a per game basis, he's going to be a lot better than the thirty fourth he's drafted. But it just depends if you expect him to be there. The same as Paul George there. Um, we have had Miles Turner taken straight in after that. Obviously, that gentleman is trying to solidify um, his blocks. And we've got Chet Holgram and Nikola Vucevic taken. Um, what are you thinking? Ahead, Jalen Brunson's off the board. Bam Adebayo's gone at 40th. What are you thinking, mate? It feels insane that I could be picking up Cunningham with the 42nd pick. Does that not seem unreal? Yeah. I'm just waiting for Andy at 41 to make his pick. And then this will be the quickest click of my life if I can land Cunningham with the 42nd pick. Um I I'm all I, I'm all about him. The rebounds from a guard position, his ability to put up shots. Hmm. Brilliant. Well yeah, done. He's sir. all mine. Fantastic. After I said that I'd be ready on the click and I'm looking around the room. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm really excited about him. I, I was. I had the level of ex- excitement last year, and then to see him go down was um, was pretty shocking. I traded for him in the early days, where he, where the the media was saying that yes, he'll be back. We're going to see him again soon, and I didn't give away a lot because that was um, a risky proposition. But um, yeah, I'll pick up where I left off with him. What are you going to do at 45, mate? I actually have the same level of excitement. 
that you had of Cade Cunningham. So Cade Cunningham, uh, Drew Holiday got taken, Cade Cunningham got taken, DeAndre Ayton and Walker Kessler. Um, as you can see on screen, um, I've taken De'Aaron Fox as high as 32 in drafts. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to have him. Um, look, realistically, I think he's going to have a better year. I think Sacramento had a really good year. Um, they're all getting older. They've played an extra year together. De'Aaron Fox is going to be great this year, and I think that that's great value. Um, you're not worried about that field goal percentage coming back down to earth and being um, being more reasonable? Not, not really. I think that I've got enough. I suppose, assets there. I'm not going to – honestly, if I think De'Aaron spots is 10, 15 spots better than what I took him at, I don't care about that. I'll trade out of him later on or trade some other guys and uh, and make a bit of a um, – is this me again? No, it's me, mate. I'm just having a little think. <laughs> Too much time for thinking. Oh, that was me. That was me. That was Claxton. Yeah, right. I just, oh, sorry, I just yeah. ordered. That's the problem. I just ordered Nick Claxton name. while talking. Anyway, not too bad. Um, I don't mind him in and around that range. Um, this is you now. That's what happens when you have two mats in the chat. That would explain why I couldn't find the draft button. I was panicking, <laughs> po- Pokemon everywhere. I'm sitting here with um, number fifty-five. I've got um, Zach Levine and Poole both on my on my queue. Um, I'm going to go with Poole. It is a tough decision. I mean, I think Zach Levine is going to be in a position now where, like my selection with Jordan Poole, is going to be the number one option of his team. I think there's a, a change of the guard there. DeRozan's going down and uh, and Zach Levine's on the up and up. So I think either of those choices would have been good, but just the prospect and the upside of Poole this year is, um, is too much to ignore. We know what he's going to do in... Uh, in his wizard's uniform before we see it happen. I'm I'm pretty happy with that pick. Sounds sounds good. Um just gonna recap while we've got a bit of a gap here before your next pick. Um so OG and so we we have to go back a little bit. So we've went Fox, Porzingis, Mobley, O um Julius Randall, Anthony Simons, that's about the earliest I've seen him go. Um Jamal Murray, OG Ananobi I took Nick Claxton. Uh, we went Scotty Barnes. We've had Jarrett Allen, Jordan Poole, Brandon Ingram, Zach Levine, Brooke Lopez, Josh Giddy, and Paolo Bancaro. Um, actually, then Shangoon as well. Um, all off the board pretty early. Um, centers are really starting to dry up here. Maybe maybe I did all right with, uh, with my Nick Claxton auto. Yeah, I think so. I think out of that list that you just read there, the one that makes me the most uncomfortable was um, Jarrett Allen at 54th. That seems um, violently too early to collect uh, to collect him. But you're right there. There was a bit of a flurry there, and a lot of um, a lot of centers went that probably shouldn't be going that high. But you know, then we got Shangun as you said, and our hurdles off the board. So there was an urgency, and I'm realistically going to be in that same position because I've well and truly short up my guard positions. Um, maybe I've missed the boat. I see Go Bears there, but I don't really want anything to do with him um, at the moment. So, yes, I've probably backed myself into a corner that's going to be difficult to get out of, especially when I, I look at this board again and just see strength after strength in the guard position. I'll, I'll let you have a quick think. Um, we've gone Pirtle, Jalen Williams, Bradley Beal, and Cam Johnson there. You've got 14 seconds, mate. Whew. Yeah. Um, um, after his return back to FIBA, you get friends Wagner. Um, again, he's got that three-way eligibility. He fits the power forward, shooting guard, and small forward spot. I think he's still the number one. Um, Man on the team in Orlando this year. Um, oh. There might be a bit of a crossover with um, with Bancaro. What do you think? Do you think he's the he's the guy? Is he the for the um, imminent future, old Franz? Yeah, I th- uh, I think Paolo Bancaro is probably the guy, but I think Franz Wagner will have a good year, and I think that that's value in that spot. Um, I was swearing because Zion got sniped. I wasn't expecting him to be there at 68 anyway. Um, I've taken Kyle Kuzma. I think we're going to get something similar to what we uh, what you expect with Poole um, in Washington and their thin roster. 
Um, we did the um, the chat there. I actually really liked um, Maxi getting taken in and around that late sixties. I can't believe Anthony Simons got taken before Maxi. Um, yeah, there's a little yeah, bit of nonsense going on here. And now you're back up with the seventy six pick. Talk us through what you're thinking with your last ten. Look, I was thinking Tyus Jones, but I'm not going to go with another homer. I've taken him in nearly every draft so far. He might slide around. I'm going to go with um, Chris Middleton at 76. I think that's pretty good there. I like him. He's still the second option um, in Milwaukee. Uh, the, the injuries behind him and the mucking around that we went through with him returning and not returning, um, the games played, head games played by Milwaukee. I'm at my 79th pick here. I'm looking at Jeremy Grant. He fits the bill that I'm going for pretty well. I think that especially if they lose Dame, um, I guess he realistically becomes the one guy, um, not not future bound, but at least for the moment. Scoot will get his day in the sun and Simons as well. But I'm going to take him. If he can get a couple of blocks, that wouldn't be too bad. He's not a, a massive um, defensive guy, but... The points are good. Um, the percentages look good. I think I'll just take him there. Yeah, so cool. we've had, well, you're having a, having a look at your next pick. I'll try and re- re- uh, rewind. So all the back, I've, way back. I've got, it, if we go, I've got it all up on the screen now if you wanted to have a look. So um, we've got yeah, um, Chris Paul, Gobert, Derek White, still too early, Vassell, mm. Jar Morant, that's good value in and around there, and then Clint Capella into... Chris Middleton. Mm-hmm. Then we start to see your Buddy Heels, your Tyler Heroes, your Jeremy Grants, your Michael Porter Jr. Probably some really safe options in there in the seventh round. Um, yeah, then leading into, I suppose, your Marcus Smarts, Mitchell Robinson, I hate that, um, CJ McCullum, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Austin Reeves. And every time I see Austin Reeves off the board, I start to look where, where my boy D'Lo is and uh, start yeah. to think, can I pick that gentleman up? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think um, we're, we're really in this little ten pickup um, run here. We're we're really down to the third option on each team. Um, you know, with Reeves going there, um, Greens there with Houston. So even Rogier. So we're really into that third man um, option point of the draft. Now, I probably need. Um, I'm going to have to get a forward or a, a big man here and a centre. I'm thinking that this might be about time with the 90th pick to pick up Gafford. Um, in the Washington pod, no one's coming for his minutes, even if they were. Um, he's probably still the man for the job. The blocks are great. Um, you know, the the field goal percentage is um, tantalising. He's, he's going to get plenty of time. A low percentage guy. The same as seasons before, but um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what he can bring. It'd be nice if he over the over the break he's worked on a um a three ball, but that seems doubtful. He again is a um is a center of the uh, of the past, not really a center of the future. And now we have you at the ninety third pick. What are you going to go for here? I'm going to go with Johnny Collins. Um, the guys watching live will see that my queue got absolutely decimated. I had Gaffett. Gafford, D'Lo, and Tyus Jones, just thinking that I had enough guys sitting there in my queue to make it through the next three, and they all got taken. Um, I think John Collins for a bounce-back year. We've seen him be a top 40 guy before. Um, can do it again. And this is me again, and I am going to look to shore up some rebounds, take another gentleman that I think is going to have a little bit of a comeback year, uh, Yusuf Nurkic. Yeah. yeah, I like that at 100. Capping off the uh, top 100 with Nurkic seems good. Um, we're at 101 now. If we just go back through the last few players, we at 92, we had uh, Tyus Jones. Collins went at 93. We had Fultz at 94. Tobias at 95. The uh, the bad bridges at uh, <laughs> Bad in the sense of that he's not a good guy. Probably, I guess he's still the second it's, best uh, bridges on the in the league. As well, while you while you're going yeah. through that, I don't want you to get auto. Yeah, yeah. No, I think um, I'm really big on Wendell Carter Jr. I'm I'm going to pick him up again. He the things that he does, he does well. He can shoot a three ball, unlike the man that I took before him in the center position. Rebounds uh, well as well. 
He's not a big defensive guy. Um, only 33 blocks last season, which is fairly grim. But um, again, for the build I'm going for, he seems like a good pick. Um, I don't really like taking, and there's no, there's nothing bad about it. This is probably something I've got in my own head. You know that I don't like taking two guys, two starters for the same team if I can avoid it. I don't like yep. in weeks where um, Orlando, you know, uh, have a poor week. You're really in trouble there. Um, but with 30 teams in the league, you're going to have to do it. It's kind of inevitable. This is just a little bugbear of mine that I try and avoid. Yeah, and it's up. not like it was. And it's not like it was your first two picks. It was. It was Correct. some later round value that sort of I feel fell to you. So yeah, I don't hate it. Yeah. Not, Re- recapping a bit, we've gone from the bad bridges to Robert Williams the third, um, Keldon Johnson, Shaden Sharp, which got taken out of my queue as well. Um, Yusuf Nurkic, uh, around a hundred. I have taken him probably as low as a hundred and twenty in leagues this year, but look, he's there. I had to take him. I think that he's going to be better than that anyway, um, especially when you're comparing to the fact that Duran got taken, Okongwu got taken, Wendell Carter Jr. I think Yusuf Nurkic is better than all of those. Um, De'Anthony Melton, Jabari Smith Jr., Trey Jones, Avaka Zubak, Scoot Henderson, Draymond Green, RJ Barrett, Jaden McDaniels, Jonas Valanciunas, and Bobby Portis. Now, Matt, how do you go? On the 114th pick, again, maybe 10 picks too early, but I've gone Jordan Clarkson. I think things are still really up in the air in Utah um, with um, Sexton and his position as point guard. Um, we saw, again, um, on, a, on a poor team, the things that Clarkson can do as he played for, for um, FIBA with the uh, Philippines team. Um Yeah, I mean, when you're getting up into this range, you're probably not going to find a lot of guys who are easily going to put up 20 points, and um, I'll take him now while I've got him. And with only three picks to go, I guess it's coming into upside time. Um, Picking some of these maybe second, third-year guys who we think are going to be breakouts. What's your thought with your final few picks? Where are you going to – what are you going to do? What direction are you taking? So, yeah, I do have um, three picks left now. I decided not to chase upside. I went with something that I knew that I would be able to just get what as advertised in Mike Conley. Um, I just don't see a lot of competition up there for him. Um, I do rate Jordan Clarkson where you took him. Um, they went into Huerta. And, uh, and Bruce Brown and Mike Conley after that. And then you start to see people just going for some safe picks in in Al Horford and Aaron Gordon and Gary Trent Jr. They're going to do as advertised. Um, and then Mally Brogdon left. I did – I was very tempted to take Josh Hart. I'm really hoping he comes back around to me mm. uh, with the next pick in two picks. Yeah, those um, – the rebounds that you can get in the guard position uh, um, would be great out of him is going to be great for my team. Um, after yeah. Russell Westbrook, uh, Kevin Porter jr. And, um, yeah, got taken before you've got a couple picks away. Um, what are you thinking? Chasing some high upside. You got, how's your center center spot? So I see Steven Adams still sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a position now where I, I probably have to take somebody. I worry about how he's, free throw percentage is going to affect my team. I, I feel like I took it quite a bump with Gafford there, even though he doesn't get to the line that often. When he does, he, he can't seem to put him in. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, this is just drop if you don't like type territory, but I think I'm thinking I might actually pick up um, Rashawn Holmes. I'm going to take him and see what he can do in Dallas. I, I think they commit to the two bigs that they already have. I think Kleber still does what he's going to do there, but in the chance that um, they're looking to shake things up a bit, they've obviously got Holmes in for a reason. I'm going to take him and and cross my fingers and see what happens. And this is the kind of range where, I mean, I just talked about picking up youth and then I've gone and pick up Rashawn Holmes. So do as I say, not as I do. Yes, and that brings us down to our last couple of picks. Do you want to roll through who's been picked up? Will I consider my next pick, please? 
Yes. Um, so we had Keegan Murray and Kyle Anderson off the board just be to- before you took uh, Rashawn Holmes, which I do like his upside there in Dallas. Um, and then some people are throwing darts at the dartboard with Quickly, Matherin, Obi Toppin. Um, Steven Adams, if he comes back healthy, could be a really interesting one. Ruins your free throw percentage immensely, but he's still good at basketball. So Sadiq Bay, the starter from Atlanta there. Um, Isaiah Stewart. Um, Boyan Bogdanovic, followed by Bogdan Bogdanovic. Ben Simmons taken out of my queue. Gordon Hayward, and um, yeah, who'd you take, mate? Yeah, it's a big no for Gordon Hayward. I think I don't. I don't see what he's going to do there this year. I think um, he he got his moments last year. Um, we know that he's uh, an injury hazard. I also thought um, one thirty six was um, was pretty low. Um, for Ben Simmons, I honestly thought he'd go more around the 110 mark, especially with all the news coming out about the fact that they want him to play um, his starting point guard position now. I've actually gone and done what I should have done around before and picked up uh, a young guy, a second year, Tari Eason, um, with a new coach in Houston. Um, hopefully they won't have the worst coach in the league uh, label anymore. I'm going to watch and see um, what he does. I'd love him to be able to get the starting power forward job. I mean, that will come at the at the uh, disadvantage of um, potentially Jabari. Um, there's a chance he could move move into the starting um, center role, but I doubt that. Hopefully, they have some sense, and um, yeah, we we saw flashes of what Tyree Eason could do with minutes when given them last. So he's a, he's a pick for me. And now I'm back around you're to my up, final up. pick. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a second. After Tari, we had Christian Wood, Kavon Looney. I took Denny of Dia. Um, again, I just think that he's going to be in a minutes battle a little bit, but he's going to get some steals in and be in and around that, you know, 120th best player. Um, Colin Sexton, Kyle Lowry, Herb Jones, Norman Powell, Jaden Ivey, Caleb Martin, Brandon Miller, I took. Um, just chasing a bit upside there in Charlotte. I don't really know what's going to become of Brandon Miller, but I know with the 148th pick, I'm okay with finding out. Um, Dennis Schroeder, who I like late. Luke Kennard, I see you've taken Zachy Collins and uh, Harry Barnes got taken next. What do you What do you think of the San Antonio situation? I, I think he's going to be the starting center. I mean, in... Um... In all things pop, we trust. It's very difficult to get a a starting player outside the 150 and even more difficult to get one that I think is actually going to do a decent job in his role. I don't see um, Wemby going and playing center minutes at any point soon or nothing that's going to worry Zach Collins anyway. So um, he's still a young man. He's hopefully shaken his um, his injury tags from from his Portland days. So I've, um, I'm really happy with that to round out the draft. And again, we're in that part of the draft too with your final pick that it doesn't matter. You know, you roll the dice yeah. on it. You drop him if you need to drop him. Mm. We're, we're, we're pretty yeah, good so friends. Do you want to your um, team no, no, mate, we're pretty good friends. <laughs> and I feel like I can tell you if I think that you've made some mistakes. Can I, can I, can I tell you something? And and yeah, I could be in exactly this. Right. I could be exactly in the same boat here. Um, this is the first draft that I haven't seen Dylan Brooks get drafted. Um, Dylan Brooks, from a fantasy perspective, is bad, but I think he's probably a top one forty four player. PJ Washington and Mark Williams. I just really think mainly, and you might you you you're the sort of guy that'll have a look at your team and be like okay with cutting him later, but. And I'm starting to look too. I'm wondering whether PJ Washington, I would probably hop on the waivers almost straight away and try and swap Brandon Miller for PJ Washington. And I reckon it's crazy to take someone like Tari Eason who played 18 minutes a night, might not get that much of a bump for a guy that they, like otherwise than a guy that they've paid like $100 million to come across in Dylan Brooks. What, um, what do you think there? Yeah, I guess I, I'm just hoping that they play Brooks um, at the three and they're going to give opportunities to Tyree Eason at the four um, and the hope they won't. I, I, I agree. I don't think 
I think if it came down to the both of them playing at the same position, um, Brooks is going to get the minutes. Um, it is just an upside pick. Um, I love watching Houston. I love these um, rebuild teams and seeing what they can do with their youth and and being a team that anyone can, you know, every dog has its day. Every man on that team gets a night where they go off. I'd, I'd like to see what Tyree can do in those first few games. Um, under a new coaching structure, uh, yeah, but, yeah, I think if you're giving me my report card, that's probably a bit of a blemish. That's my bad behaviour. <laughs> no, I just thought, like, Tari Eason, like, I'm just not sure he's going to play more than 24 minutes a night um, with the guys that have that they've signed. I'm just – I just don't see the role for him. And when they've just signed – when, like, there's – maybe PJ Washington is a good Tari Eason. Yeah, I, I think – the other good thing too, mate, is you won't have to say we're pretty good friends on the next po- podcast because you really hurt my feelings with that. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> well, take me through your team because um, maybe I would give it a thumbs down from that. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, so this isn't in pick order. I'm just going in placement order. So, um, I've got Seth Curry. Uh, Seth, jeez, imagine that was my first pick. I've got <laughs> Steph awesome. Curry as my first pick. I honestly don't think in all the comps I've ever played in. I've ever picked up, well, either of the Currys, let alone Steph Curry. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I've got uh, Donovan Mitchell. I've got Kawhi Leonard. I've got Franz Wagner. I have Jer- Jeremy Grant. Um, I've got Gafford. I've got Wendell Carter Jr. I've got Holmes. I've got Cunningham, who I can't believe I picked up, you know, coming into uh, in, into 50th. What I get him somewhere in the mid 40s seems unreal. Pool, I like that. I'm going to try and pick him up, and I know you are probably too um, in leagues where he, where he's um, yeah, available. Clarkson, um, my blemish in Eason, and then Zach Collins. I really <laughs> like the way that I finished um, I finished my team there. So what do you reckon, um, before we go and look at your team, who do you think, where do you think my errors lie while you're on your roll of um, giving me this uh, constructive feedback? Where, who was my best pick and who do you, in, in who do you think my, uh, my worst pick is? Um, I think Cade was probably your best pick. And I even really like Kawhi in and around that 30th pick where you took him. I think you drafted really well in the late, you know, leading up to, to the hundreds um, in – to getting Wendell Carter Jr. and everything. And then, like anyone, you started chucking chucking some darts at the dartboard and hope that it sticks. I know that you're a waiver wire bandit and maybe even your last three picks don't actually ever matter. Um, but, yeah, I was just really surprised and I was struggling with, um, with who to take when I started to see, I suppose, PJ Washington and stuff sitting around there and Tari Eason probably wouldn't be in my top 170 players, let alone top four, 144. That's all. And look, realistically, he's not going to last a week for you. So, Yeah, no, yeah. I think that's the thing about the fact that we've played plenty of, you know, over 10 seasons together. We kind of know what we're going to do with each of our, um, each of our lineups. I know that you often draft best available. That's a, that's what you've always gone for. I really draft for, um for position and to build towards my punt um i think i'm excited this year you and i've played a lot of uh 20 man competitions of late so this will be good this year coming back into a few more 12 um man comps i think will really work to my game which is um working the waiver wire um because i'm going to be able to pick up people that aren't isaiah joe you know i'm going to be able to pick up play getting court time and you know as you said there there's still starters potential yep. starters and you know confirmed starters still sitting on that waiver wire um yeah that's got my that's got the old heart pumping just knowing that those are uh, options when you're playing 12 man do you want to tell us about your team then I can yeah, so, I took, so yeah so i took it yeah i'd, I'd love that that would be great i'd love an yeah. argument we agree on too much man yeah. um yeah I, I had the fourth pick and i took shay gilgis alexander um followed by carl anthony towns then went into desmond bain dearon fox kyle kuzma um i accidentally auto picked a nick claxton um took chris middleton <laughs> yusuf nurkic johnny collins Mike Conley, which is a little bit of a homer. You'll see a signed basketball on the uh, on the back wall in there behind me. Um, Josh Hart, Denny Avdia, and Brandon Miller. 
Um, I suppose if I had to think as to who was sort of my best pick, it was getting um, De'Aaron Fox in and around that 45. I just definitely never expected him to be there. Even though he's probably not the best fit for my build, I just can't leave that value sitting there on the um, on the board. Um, if you had to give me a teammate grade, do you think I made any mistakes or what do you think was my best uh, my best pick to start? I really liked um, Josh Hart. He's someone I constantly forget about, and he's always someone when someone picks him up, I go, oh, damn, yeah. He's a man who's really versatile. He's um, he's obviously a guard who plays like a um, like a big man with the amount of rebounds he gets, and his percentages are re- reasonably strong. Um, I didn't mind, shockingly, the Carl Anthony Towns pick up. I think if the only player I think out of your list that maybe I wouldn't have taken as early as you did and I think a lot of people will so I'll be in the minority with my opinion is Desmond Bain I know he's I know he's a homer man for you um just I'm I'm less interested in taking someone that early on the piece that I know I can collect the skills that he brings later on I mean obviously his percentages are wonderful he's going to do Good, really good things without Jar for those first 25 games. Um, but, yeah, I mean, is his best – did he do his best work in his um, in his statistically just with his um, with his three-pointers? Because, again, that's something I just think you can, you can find heaps of that later on in the draft. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's been on the up and up. He improves every year as he should, being the age that he is and on the team that he is. But um, – yeah, that would be my only point of contention. Everything else I, I quite liked. And, um, yeah, again, getting Conley that late and the assist that he's probably going to give you um, in uh, in Minnesota. Um, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, I really liked Bain, and I sort of did get thrown a bit of a curveball. I thought I was getting Mikael Bridges, um, and I was, I was a little flustered after that. Um Yeah, but, like, that's a really hard spot. I feel like in between sort of after Carl Anthony Towns got taken for me, like that sort, those sort of Fred Van Vliet's, Pascals, like Jalen Brown got taken super early. Um, Desmond Bain is a safe option in and around there. I wasn't quite ready to take a massive punt on a a Kawhi or a Paul George or the minutes of Jimmy Butler when, yeah, I suppose when Desmond Bain is going to get an uptick at the start of the year. And... It just feels safe. It just feels like home in in there. And sometimes, like, it's not going to win me a comp. I think I said that um, as I was drafting, too. It's not going to win me a comp. Maybe taking, you know, Kyle Kuzma really late and him becoming the 30th best player or or something like that. I, don't, I can't even remember when I took Kuzma. Taking Kuzma at 70th yep. and him being the 40th best player or taking, you, you know, Yusuf Nurkic at 100 and him being the 40th best player or the same with Johnny Collins is actually what's going to win you a comp. I just think I didn't lose anything by taking Desmond Bain there, whereas if I took a Kawhi and he ends up getting banged up, if I took a Paul George or or somebody like that in and around that range, I think, um, yeah, I think it could, could have cost me a lot. So. Yeah, I think, um, and you can think about this while I answer for myself, just a, a thought that I had and just a takeaway from this specific draft as we wind up here. I think um, the thought that I'm having is, and I've, I've learned this as um, I've gone along, I probably out of the you know 11 years that we've played together, most of those years I've only played with one team. And it's not been to the last few years I've played in a few competitions. And I find if you're someone who's playing casually, with one team, you're probably going to really try and pick safe bets. But when you've got a few teams, um, Mm -hmm. I feel like caution goes to the wind a little bit, you know, like if I was only playing one competition, I probably wouldn't pick up quite like but the upside, obviously when I'm playing two, three, four different um, in four different leagues, he's going to probably land there somewhere, especially if I can pick him up at a decent spot and probably the, um, the take away just from that specific draft that I had, was um how wildly those um those centers went they went hard and they went yep. early i think there was a, a point there at about 12 picks where maybe two of the 12 didn't pick up a center in one round yep that blew my mind and it got me in a panic because i hadn't picked up a center at that point so not only did i see all of those centers go by 
I also realized, oh, I can't be like, oh, look at these suckers picking up these guys so early. I had to be a yep. sucker too and go, damn, I've got to pick someone up. Like, And off goes Gafford, who I probably wouldn't want to take uh, at least for another round before I got him. What are your, What's the thought and the takeaway that you have as we wrap up? Um, Honestly, I've been watching every mock draft and nearly – I'm nearly at the stage of writing it down as to when Zion Williamson gets taken. Um, he got taken 68th in that draft. I'm probably going to target him at 60. I took him at like 40 in early drafts because that's I think he's got upside to be a top 15, top 20 guy. Um, and now I'm trying to get value for him. So I'm doing a lot of mock drafts. And I've seen him go as low as 70, seen him go as low as 80. And I'm actively trying not to draft him now because I want to see how far he can get down. Um, but right now, I think that I'll be really safe. And I think I'll get him in most, most drafts in and around that 60. If I had a 55th pick and, um, you know, I, I feel like I could take him. And also that's the earliest that Paolo Bancaro has gone. Um, he's been a bit of a my guy this year. Yeah. I just um, I just think he's going to be really good. I think that he can make those steps forward with um, with Orlando getting better as well. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for probably those two guys. And going back to your, like, centers getting run off, I'm less panicky after maybe doing a few more mocks than you, just knowing that I can get Yusuf Nurkic and Steven Adams and a few of those starting mm-hmm. centers. Like PJ Washington, which probably has a chance to be a starting center. Like I saw Mark Williams go at 70 earlier on in the piece and PJ Washington gets re-signed and Mark Williams wasn't even picked up this draft. So like Isn't with that, the last yeah. dart throw... Like maybe you still can find a center. Um, so it's not as dire as it was yeah. in other years, I think. Yeah, yeah, I like your um, I like his Zion comment too. I think if you can take him, if you're taking him at that, if you can get him at seventy or like even as you said at sixty, pick him up there. He plays, you know, half a season, a quarter of a season. That's not going to be your make or break, but it is going to be your make if he does play. And I think that's what yep. we need to start considering with him is that if he plays eight games and then um, gravity just crushes him in his body and uh, you wouldn't look back on your on your season and go, man, if only I'd got a bit more out of him, I could have, you know, made top three or whatever. But tell you what, if he goes off and does the things that we know he can do and stays healthy and can stay on the court, you know, if, if you'd be laughing at the end of the season going, I've won and I picked up um, Zion at 65. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, man. Um, let's wrap this up. Um, yeah. Carnival of Flowers time in Toowoomba, so I might go down the park and have a have a beer. Um, good to have you on again. Uh, where can we find you um, on Twitter? You can find me at live underscore my underscore fantasy. You can find heaps if you just type that into Google. <laughs> you might not find me, but you find something you like looking at. Um, and and where where are people going to find you, mate? Besides at the Carnival uh, of Flowers, passed out in one of the garden beds. Um, at SC underscore Matrix. Um, I do a lot of chat with um with NRL, with NBL, and everything like that. Um, but I have really liked uh, some of your posts on um on Twitter, uh, especially where you compare players, NBA players, to different cars. So um yeah, follow follow along. You're gonna get a cheeky treat if you follow Live My Fantasy on Twitter. Find something, mate. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, never a chore, Matty. See you, mate. <laughs> Thanks, guys.